So, hello everybody, my name is David and today I'm gonna talk about hassle-free end-to-end testing with Cypress. Um, but I want to start with the question, why do we test actually? So, what do we want to achieve with testing? We actually, once we write a feature or if we implement a new feature, we want to verify that the new feature works and we don't introduce regression uh, tests so that a feature, an old feature, actually breaks with our new implementation code. Right, and what kind of tests exist? Well, there are unit tests, you may have heard about integration tests, acceptance tests, and end-to-end -end tests, but all of you probably do as well manual tests. And um, we can actually categorize all those tests into automatic tests or manual tests. And when I was at the developer conference, uh, we had developer conference 2017, there was a guy presenting or talking about testing in general. And he said that every time you test manually, you're wasting actually your time. And it's, it's quite a strong, um, um, it's quite a strong sentence or you, it's a strong argument about that you have to uh, automate everything. But I support this argument because once you invest a little bit of time and every time you're manually testing something, you can get back this time. So if the maintenance cost of um, probably adapting the test, if something changes, is lower than um, the time that you then get back, you should automate the test. And this could be probably for unit tests, it's quite easy to maintain the tests, but for end-to-end -end tests, it can be quite cumbersome. And yeah, before starting, before I talk about end-to-end -end tests, I still want to give you a rough overview about how TrueRadar loads your data. So we separate or we differentiate between single service, uh, self-service operators and full service operators. So uh, my talk is gonna be about the part which SSOs are using, the onboarding flow and the operator dashboard. Um, so the single, uh, the self-service operator, they are using our tools to provide their data in a manual way, whereas the full service operators, they provide a feed and the imports are kind of automated. So our first project, or when I joined the company, I uh, tried, or my first big project was to automate the onboarding uh, flow, which was in the former time, just a plain old Google form. And it was quite cumbersome for the BDMs, the business development manager, to go through all those applications and then identify the operators which are interesting for us and approve them or ex uh, accept them or decline them. So what we wanted to achieve with this automation of the onboarding process was that we wanted to streamline the onboarding uh, flow and furthermore let the operator do the work for us. So as much data as the operator can give to us, it, um, it um, was much more easier for the BDMs to uh, make decisions for de accepting or declining the operator. Because at Two River we try to have a, um, a good palette of, of different tours and different tour operators, so we don't want to oversaturate one specific region, but we try to keep um, yeah, a, 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 a good balance between <coughs> different tours and different regions and different operators. Right, um, so our challenge was that there were quite a few, uh, a lot of challenges we had to solve. Uh, one of the main challenges was we didn't have any QA, QA uh, person. So we actually started just testing manually. And once uh, a lot of data forms and autocomplete controls and sliders were involved, it was quite cumbersome and time-consuming to go through all this 
uh, onboarding process and verify that we didn't introduce any regression uh, errors or if the new feature actually works. Furthermore, a single page application, because this onboarding flow is written in React, that's the reason why I'm talking here, uh, is a single page application, so there happens a lot of communication, communication between the REST API and our REST API and the single page application. So once we introduce a new feature in the REST API, this could have potentially influenced as well our application. So what we wanted to make sure that um, by any mean that the onboarding flow uh, breaks for, for any potential customer operator. So we decided let's create some end-to-end -end tests and try to automate this and make it as efficient as possible for us to verify, okay, once there's a new release for REST API, a new release for a single page for, for our onboarding flow, that we don't break anything. So what kind of problems do we have with end-to-end -end tests? Well, it, they could be flaky, which means that sometimes a test can fail, sometimes not. So probably in your continuous integration, you, you see that the test fails, but then you run it locally, and you probably have a faster internet connection, I don't know what and your test <coughs> passes. Furthermore, especially for single page applications, the DOM is quite dynamic. You're constantly updating your DOM. So you probably have to somehow write your test in a way that you wait for an element to appear. Probably there are hidden elements. You should not interact with a hidden element because a user wouldn't be able to interact with a hidden element either. And there are a lot of HX requests, you probably should wait for them. So there's a lot of problems that you have when you want to write end-to-end -end tests for single page applications. And sometimes it's quite difficult to simulate user behavior. Goals of end-to-end -end tests. Right, so from a user perspective, if the, if the user can achieve what he wants to do then um, he perceives this single page or uh, this application as functional so end-to-end -end tests we tried to create our end-to-end -end tests in a way that we try to identify critical paths and through the application and then write tests based on those critical paths the reason for that is when you think about the flow a uh, user can go through your application or take through your application. It can be quite cumbersome to cover all cases, all paths. So you rather, or at least for us, we just concentrated on the, on the most business critical paths and we assure that these paths don't break. Ideally, you don't do any mocking. So <coughs> the test hits the database and you're creating actually data. And yeah, as I already told you, you kind of test the user story. So what, what, wants, what does the user want to achieve? And this is what you write then in the test or we try to repro reproduce in the test as well. So for the onboarding flow, in our case, we identified, for instance, critical paths such as users should be able to log in a user should, uh, an admin should be able to impersonate, or a user can add a new tour and upload images. And with this list of critical paths, we started to implement those critical paths into code and testing code. Before I show you some code, I just want to introduce you a little bit Cypress. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the comments and, and all possibilities because I think this is uh, the right place is the documentation that you can go through. But a really cool, a really cool principle of Cypress is that every comment is asynchronous, which means that although your test looks quite synchronous, you have to keep in mind that this can be, at least in this, at the start, quite 
could, could it could be a potential error because you probably try to assign a value uh, to a, a local variable and then you get back some weird stuff so just to keep in mind everything is asynchronous but with this fact that everything is asynchronous you can define uh, some assertion so if you're waiting for an element that's as easy as just assert, uh, write an assertion that um, you're expecting that this DOM element is present in the DOM. And after some timeout, if this does not, if this condition is never met, it will fail. But you don't have to explicitly say, please wait for this element and wait two seconds, but you just say, okay, this is what I'm expecting. If the condition is met, the test will continue. Furthermore, this the Cypress runs alongside the app. So you have access to any browser APIs such as local storage. You can inject cookies. You can delete cookies once, you're, once you want to simulate some uh, logout state and stuff like that. So you can even have, have some shortcuts once you say, for instance, you're testing authentication flow. Okay, that's fine. It's fully functional then you probably want to test the dashboard, then it doesn't make sense to go through the whole authentication process once again to go, go to the dashboard, but you just say, okay, now um, inject those cookies or inject this token to, um, to make the app already be logged in. Furthermore, with Cypress, you get a separate UI for running, debugging, inspecting tests, and you have really cool features uh, such as time travel, so you can, I will show you this then in the demo, so you can click through and see how the test run, uh, runs for each step, and you can then inspect if there's something failing, you can just inspect what, what happened. Furthermore, you can spy, you can install spies and create stops for your network requests. So spies are quite uh, powerful because you can assert on them as well to say, okay, wait until this network request, request has finished and then continue with your uh, testing flow. And furthermore, you can uh, create screenshots or record videos about your test runs. Right, so let's go to the demo. Um, I just want to show you um, an example for authentication. Let's go to the very top. Um, so this is a, a, a normal test setup for, for each test. You, you're gonna run some server directive and then um, with those two lines, you're uh, telling Cypress, please, for all users request, um, make, make an alias, get user, and for the same, post request to off login, make an alias <laughs> to login. And what you can do then what is, uh, you can see here in line 18, that you wait until this request that has been defined here on top, uh, sorry, this one, um, is finished. And so you prevent the test, that this flakiness, that probably a request takes 1.5 seconds and in, in another round, just one second. So you can, uh, yeah, you can minify the, the flakiness of tests. If we then um, look at uh, and test, for instance, this one, um, users should be able to imper uh, should log in as in-person operator, redirect the dashboard, and showing admin controls. Um, it's quite straightforward you can just query fields type in something click on it and you wait until this login request that has been defined on top has been finished and then you expect that the url includes dashboard slash url the tours if we run this um, This is the, the UI that you get with Cypress. 
let's run the authentication spec. We're now just running the one that I was just ex I just explained. So test is finished and run through. I can run the whole <coughs> spec for authentication. And as you can see, it's yeah, types quite fast, so it's quite um, easy to reload and the test runs itself are quite fast. You don't have any interaction for, like, if you would compare it, for instance, for, with Selenium, there is no interaction. Your tests are directly written, uh, run in the browser. Right. Um, I was talking about the onboarding flow, so I can show you as well just a short, um, a short uh, test run for the onboarding flow. So for if an operator applies, the operator has to supply some contact data and location. They have to provide some information about the company, where they are located. Here, for instance, you can see that even, okay, can stop this here. Um, just one second. Here, for instance, you can see even that there's a type ahead, so you you type in some uh, some location, and the the test is actually waiting until this auto suggest request finished, and moves on to the next step in the test. I mentioned as well that you can step through your test. So, for instance, let's say here in the in that case, um, the button is clicked. You can like trace everything. You can even go for um, some before and after. So, for instance, here you see, okay, this is now the the company legal name, and afterwards it's filled in. So you can even have dump snapshots before and after of each test run, which is quite powerful if you run into any problems. Right. Um, let's go back to slides. Now, pros and cons. Um, I would say Cypress is really, really strong in, in debugging. So as you have this UI and the, the the time travel, you can go through each step, uh, each test, and even each step in your test. You get an all-in-one solution. You don't have to set up anything. You just install it um, via NPM or Yarn, and you get just uh, everything just works out of the box. Um, when I implemented those end-to-end -end tests, it was for me as well a lessons learned that I tried, or I had to clean up some components. So some form fields didn't have a name or an ID or a label. So it was even a good thing to implement those tests because then your components were easier to, to uh, query and to approach. Furthermore, tests run directly in the browser. I already said that, that you have access to any native browser API. So there's no interaction, like for in, in Selenium, you have this somehow this channel where there's a Selenium server and Selenium client and you're executing the test and you have to pass it through and back. But there's no interaction, the test runs just in browser. It's quite fast and what I really liked as well was that the tests, the tests are part of my repository where the single page application is. Because in my opinion, writing tests should be straightforward and the test should be as close as possible to the actual code. Because if it's, if it's cumbersome, you would never um, create more tests or it would, it would be something that would speak against uh, writing tests. So in my case, it's just like, Next to the to the actual code, I have my test file, and um, if it's part of in in the case of Cypress, it's not like 
directly in, in at the same level as my, my source file because the end-to-end -end test touches a much more, it's a broader test, but at least it's in the same rep repository. Um, and it's written in JavaScript, so I didn't have to write any Java or anything else. Cons. Uh, Cypress is still in beta, and it was a little bit strange that window.fetch wasn't wasn't I wasn't able to create a spy on window.fetch so um, they mentioned it in in a github issue but it was kind of surprising for me that only this window.fetch method wasn't able to be spied on currently they just support chrome and firefox in the latest version so if you're thinking of having cross-browser support testing so starting from internet explorer 